that major update to our season destroy investigation. A South Carolina judge has fined Chief Mark Keel for discovery abuse in a civil rights lawsuit out of Dorchester County. O'Keel heads the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, also known as SLED, the state's top law enforcement agency. Good evening. I'm Alicia Barnes. And I'm Brian Blakely, the farmer that filed the lawsuit after he says SLED mowed down his million dollar hemp crop and then tried to hide evidence from him. Evidence that farmer believes shows SLED conspired to destroy his crop. Here's Chief Investigator Jody Barr with an update to seize and destroy a Queen City News investigation. John Trenton Pendarvis versus... The During a virtual hearing in October, Trent Pendarvis's legal team spent more than an hour presenting evidence it says proves SLED hid evidence from this Dorchester County farmer before SLED raided his farm and mowed his hemp crop down in 2019. The defendant's conduct in this case was not just obstructionist discovery conduct meant to obstruct the plaintiff from getting discovery. It was also meant to mislead the plaintiff. And qu quite frankly, it was also meant to mislead the court. He's going to get his dad come get the truck. Another example, Patrick McLaughlin argued, is what happened when sled agents went to circuit court judge Diane Goodstein just a week before the raid. Sled asked Goodstein to sign a seizure and destruction order for Pendarvis's hemp crop. Sled sent the judge an attorney general's opinion published in July two months before the raid to support their request. That July opinion, McLaughlin argued, that we're out here because, uh, because the Department of Ag called us out here, had nothing to do with the Trent Pendarvis case. But in August 2019 opinion, SLED asked for, specifically for Pendarvis, did. In that opinion, the AG advised SLED to seek judicial authorization before destroying the crop. Pendarvis's lawyers argued SLED purposely tried to deceive Judge Goodstein by withholding the August opinion from her and from Pendarvis's legal team. We asked them to admit that the actual opinion they submitted to Judge Goodstein, because when they sent her that ex parte order, Your Honor, they sent her an AG opinion, and the order actually references an AG opinion. It is not the August 8th AG opinion. Instead, it's a July 10th, 2019 opinion, and that opinion deals with different factual situations than the allegations against the plaintiff. Specifically, it deals with people who are cultivating or possessing hemp and don't have a license. Oh, by the way, this AG's opinion you got, you guys have never identified or produced to us this original letter that you sent to the AG where you sought that opinion. We demand that you that you give us that correspondence, you identify it, and you produce it to us. SLED never has done that, Your Honor. Goodstein refused to approve SLED's request. Instead, she offered SLED her courtroom to bring the farmer in for a hearing. SLED declined her offer. Then one week later... Right now, we're going to place you under arrest for growing hemp without a license. SLED went to a Dorchester County magistrate to get an arrest warrant for Trent Pendarvis. Court records show SLED did not tell that judge of its plans to seize and destroy the crop or of Judge Goodstein's refusal to grant SLED the same request a week earlier. Later that morning, SLED swarmed Trent Pendarvis's hemp field. Response, Mr. Linderman? Uh, yes, Your Honor. May it please the court, Andrew Lindemann for uh, uh, Chief Mark Keel in his official capacity. The state hired Columbia attorney Andrew Lindemann to defend SLED Chief Mark Keel. He argued SLED simply wanted Judge Goodstein to allow them to seize the field. You look at what was presented to Judge Goodstein was a document that was uh, intended to uh, allow for the seizure uh, of the illegal hemp crop and before it was destroyed to give the owner the opportunity to request and receive a post-seizure hearing. That is what SLED went uh, to Judge Goodstein uh, to uh, try to discuss with her. And they were unsuccessful in discussing it with her. She would not uh, have a meeting uh, with uh, with the SLED uh, uh, general counsel's office on that. We didn't seek judicial approval to destroy the hemp crop. We sought judicial approval to make a pre-seizure 
um, I mean, a pre-hearing seizure uh, of the of the hemp crop, give the opportunity to the owner to request a post-seizure hearing. McLaughlin's discovery fight with SLED started in Marion County weeks after agents arrested Trent Pendarvis in 2019. There, McLaughlin says SLED hid documentary evidence for more than a year, only disclosing it to Pendarvis' team just before a hearing where McLaughlin was set to ask a judge to force SLED to turn the missing records over. The remark was, you got everything, Patrick. I gave you 168 pages. I pointed out... That's not that's not the case. And you should know that's not the case, because in the November 9th, 2021 letter I sent you, there's a footnote where I specifically told you, you guys have identified pages past bait stamp 89, yet you only gave us bait stamps one to 89 and three videos. So it's it would seem clear that there's stuff you haven't given us. You need to produce it. So, okay, well, we'll get that to you. They turn around and they email us the missing pages. So on March 10th, 2022, we get 79 missing pages of discovery. We had noticed them that they had been missing back on November 9th. So they had been, they knew that they had been missing them for 121 days, Your Honor. When we were coming up on the on the hearing in Marion, on the courthouse steps, all of a sudden, we get, oh, let us supplement our discovery responses. 356 days after our first Rule 11 letter telling them that their responses to those requests for admission were no good, that they didn't comply with the rules. Your Honor, this last minute discovery response makes our argument for us. It shows that they, they, their, their intention with this was simply to obstruct, to evade, do not do anything until the very last second. And even when you do it at the last second, don't actually cure the deficiency. Continue to be obstru as obstructionist and evasive as you think you can get away with. Lindemann admitted SLED and Chief Kill might have missed something along the way. And I stand here and say they got every single email well, we produced the entire files on these two particular incidents, these two particular um, uh, investigations. Uh, to the ex extent there may have been some additional emails that he was able to obtain through uh, discovery with the Department of Agriculture, uh, I'm not disputing that. But the bottom line is to suggest that we didn't produce emails along the lines of what was requested for is just absolutely false. Pendarvis's lawyers also ask for personnel records of SLED agents involved in the raid, something anyone can get under the state's Freedom of Information Act. SLED fought that too. We went on to say to the extent that a court orders the production of the personnel files or portions thereof, the production should be protected by a confidentiality order or other protective order which has not been entered in this litigation. And why has it not been entered in this litigation? Because Mr. McLaughlin will not agree to confidentiality orders. Uh, he historically does that in all his cases. Uh, and he and I had a discussion in this case. He didn't reveal that to the court and he declined to do so. But the judge's order states it is SLED Chief Mark Kill's responsibility to ask the court for a confidentiality order something Kill still hasn't done in this case. There's no increased privacy right by, by law enforcement officials. In fact, Burton v. York County tells us that as public officials, they've got less privacy than a private citizen does. They've never moved for any type of protective order. They just refuse to produce those documents. McLaughlin believes Mark Kill intentionally kept that evidence from Trent Pendarvis. Mm. So Pendarvis would not find out the backstory of what led to the raid of his family farm. These emails that you guys have now finally produced to us show us that this is intentional and willful bad faith attempts to avoid answering our requests. Judge, we sit here today in front of you 381 days since we asked two simple requests for admit that we now know through their own 
discovery should have been admitted. And that is, did you guys try to comply with that AG's opinion? Did you try to get judicial approval to seize and destroy his crop? And was that judicial approval denied? 381 days have been by, and they still have not admitted that. In this 31-page order handed down this afternoon, Judge Mate Murphy ordered SLED Chief Mark Kill to pay attorney Patrick McLaughlin a fine of $11,300 for the extra work and delay Kill's discovery misconduct caused. The judge wrote, Kill's written responses to the Pendarvis lawsuit are examples of his intentional, willful, and bad faith nature of Kill's discovery conduct. Failing to properly respond, ignoring written notifications of deficient responses, forcing the plaintiff to file motions, forcing the court to schedule hearings, and then at the last minute, attempting to cure the deficiency is not conducting discovery in good faith and is evidence of intentional, willful, and bad faith conduct. I find that the prejudice to the plaintiff from Kill's conduct is clear, convincing, and substantial. Basic discovery in this case has now been delayed for over a year. We asked SLED Chief Mark Kill for a response. A SLED spokesman wrote in an email to us, as we have said previously, SLED and Chief Kill will not be commenting while litigation is pending. Chief Kill has 30 days to turn both the check and remaining discovery evidence over to Trent Pendarvis. The hemp farmer's lawsuit could go to trial as early as September, and we'll keep you posted on what happens next in this case.